Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. So, Scorpio, your reading has is has a somewhat similar message to Gemini, but there's a different reason. So, you both you and Gemini are being asked to. Um, to consider your direction. Temple of Dreams. Sacred dreams, prophecies, dream journeys. And what's interesting about this is there's all these different spots to dream. So there's the hammock and the boat and then this sort of uh, swing kind of arrangement and um, right, just a meditation cushion. So there's all different ways, all different dreams, different paths to reach the dream. You are not required to reach your dream the way anybody else has done in the past. And then this second card didn't want to come out until after I'd seen this dream card. Um, what I do is I lay everything out face down, right, except for the bottoms, or what I think of sort of as the top of the deck. And then I turn everything over, starting usually at the top. And this time when I turn that card over, it was then that I wanted to pull a second card for this sort of um, overall energy. And the card that wanted to come out was to the moon and back. So I want to say that you are, right, and this moon that she's sitting on, right, is just, right, like this moon, it's up there. There is something that is calling to you that you really, 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 really want to do. But you aren't doing it. And maybe you're waiting, you're waiting for something. You're waiting for something to be revealed, perhaps. or you're waiting for permission. And I think that maybe it's more possibly about that. We have the drum, which is this calling, summoning energy. And I believe that this is you being summoned. You are being summoned, but directly and, and and at the bottom of this deck is lightning. So there's this, this sudden energy. It may be that this is, that this, you know, maybe you've had this sort of idea, dream, kind of in the back of your mind for a long time. It's been sort of dormant or lurking in, in the back of your mind. But now, now it's right, like somebody's turned on the light. The lightning has struck. You, you hear the call of the drums. But right under the drums is the ancient ones. And I, I think that your hesitation is about other people. Gemini's hesitation um, was about financial stability. But I believe that yours is more about people and perhaps specifically family in some way. Now below the ancient ones, as I've just seen, is the council, which for me, all right, is your own heart. And actually under that, and I'll stop there, is magic. 
So your heart, your spirit, and maybe even a good part of your mind is all about whatever this dream is. But this family or perhaps other people energy, and it might even be with the ancient ones, it might even be some sort of sense of duty or obligation that you have to the past to your ancestors, to your family line in some way. Maybe there's a profession that has run through your family, perhaps for several generations. And you've, you've felt an obligation to that. Or you have an obligation to maintain familial wealth. Um, you know, it makes me think of, of, you know, in places like Great Britain where there are estates that are entailed, you know, and they go from father to eldest son. And each person is kind of, the, they're tied to this estate because it's entailed. They can't sell it. They're sort of stewarding this um, this estate. And if that's what you really wanted to do, if you really enjoyed that, then it would be great. But if it felt like a millstone around your neck, because what you really wanted to do was to, you know, move to a completely different country and do something else, right, then it would be really heavy. So there's something, there's some sense of obligation And that in order to answer this call, something a little bit drastic has to occur. Because we have the serpent, right? This energy of transformation, um, also of the subversive. You know, serpents show up as trickster energy. Right, the serpent in the garden. And in most stories, you know, you shouldn't follow the serpent. It's a, right, it's a, a seductive energy. You should do what you're supposed to, right? Fulfill your family obligation. Do the thing that you're supposed to. Propaganda. You know, there are ways that myths and stories are revelatory. They, they reveal things about the society and the culture that dreamed them into being. Um, and they can have really profound and beautiful messages, but they can also be propaganda. They're, I mean, they can be all of these things at once. So the serpent can be calling you out of that. And so it appears dangerous, right? To slip out of your skin and be exposed can feel really risky, dangerous. Right? Because you're very, you're vulnerable, that, that new skin, you know, it's like a baby's skin. And then also that you're going to go into the unknown, into this vortex, this spiral, where you, you won't know what's happening. And although Scorpio energy um, is often really willing to go into the dark spaces, it's also a fixed energy. So risk-taking. You know, you may, there may be places in your life where you really don't want to take a risk. And it, it can be perhaps around relationship that this is, you know, maybe you're willing to take the financial risk. Maybe that's not even a problem for you. 
but risking relationship. Going into uncertainty, not knowing what everybody's going to say when you do this thing. And this could be anything. It could be, um, you know, some job you're going to take. Uh, it could be, you know, in the current climate, it could be who you vote for. Um, you know, how you proceed with your health. Uh, you know, there's a whole variety of, of ways that you um, could go that might cause relationship problems. But the call is not going away. Right, this mystical shaman is kind of breathing you breathing you into life. Breathing you into change, breathing you into this spiral. So this, this card also came out in the Gemini deck, but in a different way. So we have Sweat and Lack like Center in Church. And in Gemini's reading, it was about right, like really knowing that what you're doing isn't what you want to be doing. But here, this feels like, like you're injured, you know, those, those moments when you, when maybe you're really agitated emotionally and it seems like everybody can see it. You know, you've had this, what could be illicit or subversive idea and you're walking around with it in your head and, and it's like everybody can see it. And you're, you're imagining perhaps all of the reactions, right? There's the too big for your britches. Who do you think you are? Um, energy, which <clears throat> if you um, have read or listened to any of Brene Brown, that is a it's often the, right, the shame trigger. All right. All right, the stuck up little madam. Too big for your riches. Um, we also have, aren't you precious? And the barking up the wrong tree. So I think this is, this has had the right, the energy that you've been in, Scorpio, is this fear, right? This fear of what this new idea, this new direction that you want to take is going to cause. That you're going to attract all kinds of attention that you don't want. The people are going to be really critical. That you may lose friendships, that you won't have any support if you go off and do this. And this is, this is very difficult. You know, this is really the crux of things, I think that our sense of security isn't really about the financial so much, you know, having enough that the, the fear of being shunned, of being pushed out is not about, you know, starting to death or, or whatever, that it's about right, being alone. I think that, I think being alone, like really alone is our deepest, deepest fear as human beings. That, and, and not just alone, but shunned. You know, so not like the hermit who goes off and chooses to be alone, 
but being forced into being alone, abandoned, shunned, ostracized. I think this is a very deep fear. And you should not in any way um, be critical of yourself because you have this fear. Completely normal. And the current climate, now in 2023, there's an amping up of that feeling. I mean, not only what's actually happening, but it's kind of what everybody's talking about, right? How we are polarized and how we're getting more and more polarized, right? This is the messaging. So there's both the reality and then on top of it, this messaging. And then post all of the lockdowns, when we were, many of us separated from our loved ones. That was very, very difficult. And we don't, right? We never want to feel that again. But at the bottom of this deck is whatever floats your boat. Fulfillment, enthusiasm, follow your bliss and money comes, passion project, do you. You know, it's not, right, it's not going to go away. So, where, where, where might this take you? Right, so this is, this is this pull, this is your fears about it. And now we come to the possibilities of this. We have the Nine of Cups. So, wish fulfillment. And, you know, we have three nines here, actually. There's the nine underneath is this Nine of Swords that's right where you've been living. And actually, at the bottom of the deck is the Three of Cups, which is, um, in this, especially in this deck, you know, we've got Arthur and Lancelot and Guinevere. And Lancelot and Guinevere betray Arthur with each other. And so this card is meant to show um, reproachment or um, uh, you know, restoration of a friendship, but it doesn't really work out that way, actually, in the story. <laughs> so, um, you know, this is possibly stuffing down your own feelings in order to get along. Right? Did, did Arthur really want to make friends with these two again? Probably not, really. So, right, with this Nine of Swords and this Three of Cups. But then we have this Nine of Cups. What is possible? And then the Nine of Sacred Circles. And then the King of Sacred Circles. So this, this really strong stability both emotional and resource stability. And the sense, right, in this deck, because they're not pentacles, but sacred circles. Also a sense of, like, feeling right with yourself. Feeling right with your own soul. Having um, I don't know that I don't want to call it the spiritual high ground exactly because it's not like you're looking down on anybody, but the the spiritual stability, right? Really knowing who you are, and then there's this five of staves, which. Um, 
Five of Wands, which in this deck is not competition or conflict, it's collaboration. It's people working together to build, you know, some amazing monument. And then the Seven of Circles, Bounty. And not even waiting for Bounty, but this Bounty is already here. It's been collected. And it is to be shared. So it's, right, this call to, to personal leadership. To being willing, right, to, to be the leader in your own life and possibly a leader in your community even. Because you may discover that there's other people in your midst, not everybody, probably, but other people who are just waiting. Just waiting for you to reveal yourself. And then they would show themselves to you. You know, that, that people will appear, maybe on totally unexpected people. <laughs> maybe people who, like you, have really been towing the line. But secretly, secretly, they really want to express something else. And this makes me think of Rupert Sheldrake telling this story about uh, giving a lecture about, you know, dogs who know their owners are coming home. And when he gives it to scientists, they always poo-poo it, right? There's no evidence for psychic phenomena and so on. But then later, when they're all, you know, having their break, and having coffee and a bun, they'll come up to him individually, privately, and tell him about how their dog always knows when they're coming home. So there's this, this secret that wants to come out, but it needs to be given permission. Somebody has to go first. And you are being invited to be that leader. And not, I stress actually not, that is not really the purpose. That's gonna be sort of a happy side effect. The purpose is really for you. So we have here this, this sort of this dog who's been staring into the abyss uh, with this five of cups, right? And you know, this is five of cups energy, the possibility of your cups spilling, of losing, of disappointment, of heartbreak. And that you can, right, you can get this kind of blank, dark stare that happens when you suppress yourself in order to avoid this. Under it, we have the Ace of Air, the Ace of Swords, the new idea, the soaring into the new place. And below that, the Seer of Air, more rising. We take off and then we totally rise and then we have the Ace of Wands. And at the bottom of the deck, we have the lovers. So this, this row is really about a little, this is sort of some, some initial advice. Which is, right, the lovers is about choosing, right, choosing love over fear here. And also choosing to love others. You know, to know that there may be people around you who will be afraid. Right here with this chariot card, there's one dog, which is you, looking up. And then this other dog is looking at you. 
right? To know that others feel, feel many of the same fears that you do. And that you can, that you can love them through that. Even if initially, I mean, this dog is looking very pleased and there will be those who are so glad and who will, you know, maybe come to you at first secretly. <laughs> say, I've been wanting to say that or do that or be that. But there may be others who snarl and, and bark and try to bite. But to feel to feel love for them. To not, to not see that as a threat to you. Because you are this king of sacred circles who is Taurus energy across the way from you. Strength, stability, standing on your own ground. The, the strength of the earth, of the cosmos beneath you. And then this 10, this wheel of fortune energy. It actually is a different title, I think, in this deck. And now I feel like I should go look. what it is. So just the wheel. Purpose. So the, the little quote in the guidebook, I pause and root myself in my truth before I turn the wheel toward a life filled with purpose. And then the three of fire, the three of wands, which is right collaborative energy. To feel confident that you will not be alone. That even if maybe no one in your immediate circle joins you, that there will be others. That you are not trapped. Right? These are not the only people that you will ever know not the only people that can ever be a support to you. There are others. And taking, right, taking these steps forward, you'll be able to see them and they you. And then the high priestess. And here also the peacock, right? Who is totally not afraid to show off to, to reveal his full magnificence to anybody who happens to be there. To know, you know, to, to be, be gentle with yourself. This is a gentle energy. You're not meant to force yourself into anything, but to to gently and repeatedly, right? That is an element of, of pentacles, consistency. To remind yourself whenever necessary that you are not alone. And that because, well, for two reasons. One, of course, there's always your own soul and, and your fellowship and the source of all things. but that, that there are going to be people. And it may, you know, there may be a moment, there may be a period when it feels really alone, when you're on your own with other humans. But you, you can't find that real belonging that we all want if you're suppressing whatever this is. <coughs> so, Advice. 
specifically, we're going to start at the bottom of the deck is the nine of pentacles and actually the 10. So, you know, this isn't so much financial for you. I think, I really think that, I really feel like finances are not at the root of this. At least not in reality. It may be that you have some feeling that you're reliant on these other people, especially if they're your family, you know, in a, in a financial way. But I think that it's, it is more about feeling stable through relationship that having this, um, this family relationship is, uh, is really the thing. And it, you know, it makes me think of, um, you know, various TV shows and movies and things where somebody leaves a really tight knit group, um, a, a group like the travelers in the British Isles or, um, you know, a tight knit religious group or like, right? Like the Amish, um, because in so many ways that is so supportive. But your personal goals and desires and wishes might lead you out of that. And it does take courage, which I think you have. Um, there's this two of cups, right? You're hesitant here to take the cup <clears throat> and the hierophant is here kind of behind you. Maybe right? you, you can feel him behind you. You don't want to take the cup. He'll know, <laughs> but the answer to that is to know that who cares if he's back there because you are the king of cups. Scorpio. This is Scorpio's card. And not only are you the king of cups, but you are the king of pentacles. The Scorpio Taurus axis. You are all of this when you are able to recognize it. You have all the stability and security in the world. And that following your heart will show it to you. And so you right, listen to the, the call, hear the drums that summon you, hear the music that's calling you with this page of swords, lady of swords. Now, an interesting thing at the moment, astrologically, Mars, who is your, one of your co-guides and Pluto is the other. So there are three things. One, the full moon in Aries is this coming Friday, the 29th. And Mars is in Libra. So he's opposite. Uh, where the full moon will be. And, and he's traditionally thought of as an, in his detriment, but I don't think that he is. Because in Libra, he is led by Venus, who's over in Leo. And she is led by the sun, who is in, um, by the moon, uh, by the sun, who, um, in Leo, right, who is in Libra. So there's a, a mutual receptivity between Venus and the sun. So there's all this lovely, um, expansive Venus energy. And I think that Mars is just soaking it up. <laughs> the second thing that happens is that, um, Mars squares Pluto. So the, those two are the co-rulers, right? The co-guides of um, Scorpio, Mars, and Pluto, and they square each other. So they're going to get into a conversation about relationship and power and tradition 
Pluto's in Capricorn, which is all that ancient ones stuff, following traditions. And do you really need to? And then the third thing that happens is that the new moon in Libra happens and it happens on the spot where Mars was during the full Aries moon. So about 21 degrees of Libra is where Mars will be for the full Aries moon. And then the new moon in Libra happens on that spot, 21 degrees of Libra. Now there are, right, one can take that in many different directions. But in relationship to this reading, right, it's about relationship and a new way based on this Aries Mars energy. This courage, courage based, courageous, um, going first. Uh, leading others by going first energy of the Aries full moon. And doing it right, very specifically around relationship with Mars in Libra and with, with diplomacy, right? So not, you know, just blowing things apart, right? Doing it the way the lovers would do it. The way the King of Cups and the King of Pentacles would do it. Knowing that everybody has fear. Feeling, right, great compassion for others. Right, that's this council energy. Right, this heart-based guidance. So Scorpio, I wish you, I wish you courage. I wish you peace. I wish you clarity. And I wish you all the very, very best. And I will see you next time. So long, Scorpio.